you're trying to pick out a whiskey glass, but it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the different options. There's the Glen Cairn, probably the most famous whiskey glass in the world, or the humble Ikea glass, or whatever comes to hand in the kitchen. Well, that maybe makes the choice look a bit easier, but there's one big mistake people make when choosing a glass to taste whiskey. You've got to ask yourself, why are some glasses so well known and renowned for drinking whiskey? And is there actually any reasoning behind it? Don't worry, because we're about to uncover why you should pick each glass, as well as uncovering the biggest slip up people make when choosing what to drink their dram from. Firstly, if you think you already know where people go wrong, then let us know in the comments down below. But let's get stuck in. To be honest, I used to think that all this talk about different glassware for your whiskies was basically a lot of BS. That was until I started putting a few different styles of glass to the test. I really don't think it's anything to do with whiskey snobbery. It can make a huge difference to how you experience the whiskey in your glass. It all depends on when, where, and really even why you're drinking the whiskey in the first place. And I'd say there are probably different glasses for different situations and the different circumstances dictate what you're going to use and when. The one thing most of them will have in common is that they're designed to capture the aromas for detailed nosing. The Scotch Malt Whiskey Society glass is a really good example. It's based on the Copita or small glass style from the world of Sherry, where the smaller circumference of the rim really kind of concentrates the whiskey's aromas when you hold it under the nose. Really good. Nothing escapes here. It's it's really funneling the, the, the aromas, and but it also means you do have to approach with a bit of caution, especially with the society cast strength whiskey. The concentration of the alcohol can be a little bit spiky in the nose, so approach it gently. And as always, if it's a bit much at cast strength, you can add a wee bit of water. Perfect. So the Glen Cairn is one of the best known whiskey glasses and you'll probably recognize its classic shape if you've ever been in a decent whiskey bar. The company sells about 5 million of these whiskey glasses every year and if you don't have one in your collection already, I really would recommend it. Uh, I love this glass and there's a good reason I think it's so popular for a start. It feels pretty solid and it has a nice wide bowl at the bottom giving you a really nice view of the whiskey so you can appreciate its colour. Like the Society's Copita, it also tapers up to the rim, but I think that here, the kind of wider bowl helps to dissipate some of the alcoholic vapors and it's easier to approach. There are loads of other glass styles that you can try and there seems to be more innovation in this area as people start to focus more on just how much difference a specific kind of glass can make. For example, Riedel's tulip style glasses flare out at the top and that curve in the bowl affects how the whiskey enters your mouth. Some people find that does make a difference, but it's not to everyone's taste. If you're really taking it seriously, of course, then there's always the option of using some kind of coloured glasses which will disguise the colour of your whisky. That's often what blenders and professional tasters use so that they're not being influenced in any way, even by the colour of the whisky. They're great fun as well if you want to do a blind tasting and put all your powers of concentration to the test without having any kind of visual distractions or other clues that might lead you to have some preconceived ideas about what the whisky is going to be like before you've even tasted it. Personally, when I head somewhere for the weekend, I don't just pack my whisky, I always take a box of society glasses or Glen Cairns as well. I figure that if I've paid a decent amount of money for a special dram, I really want to be able to experience it in the best possible way and the kind of glass I use has become essential to that sense 
of enjoyment. Before I reveal the most common mistake people make when choosing a whiskey glass, it's worth noting that there are really many other factors that are going to impact your appreciation of a dram. Ultimately, it's about where you are, who you're with, what's around you in that environment, and who doesn't love to share a slug from a, from a hip flask, for example, when you're out in the countryside or celebrating making it to the summit of a Scottish Monroe. I've done that many times and it's always great. In that environment, it's not about nosing or tasting, it's just about a warming dram to lift the spirits and share a special moment with your pals. Mm. That was quite a slug. Yeah. Right, you're going to have to stop that. <laughs> we have to keep that. <laughs> Okay. That was a proper yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> It's not water. Okay. Did you think there was water in it first? No. <laughs> Jeez, oh. And that brings us nicely on to the biggest mistake people make when picking out a glass. It is, of course, the tumbler. Now, I'm not saying that people should steer clear of tumblers altogether. If I'm at home chilling out or at a friend's place and they offer me a whiskey and a tumbler, I'm certainly not <laughs> going to refuse it or complain about it. We're not sitting there carrying out a serious sensory evaluation of the whiskey. It's a social experience. And in a situation like that, I don't really care too much what kind of glass we're using. I might even want to add a cube of ice or have a decent splash of water in the whiskey. And a tumbler is perfect for that. A nice chunky tumbler can feel pretty good in your hand. It's like its substance adds something to the experience of enjoying the whiskey. That's purely psychological, like when you pick up a bottle and because it feels heavier, you immediately think it's going to taste better. That's really just your mind playing tricks on you. What is fact is that while drinking from a heavy tumbler might make you feel like a big shot, its wide rim really tends to diffuse the whiskey's aromas to the point you can lose them altogether. If you want to drown your whiskey in soda, that's absolutely fine, go ahead. But for sensory evaluation, these are pretty useless. The aromas just kind of disappear. So if you have spent a fair bit of money on your whiskey and you really want to appreciate it, savor it, unpack its complexities, and take your time nosing and sipping it, I would absolutely recommend a specific kind of whiskey glass. Ultimately, the choice of glassware, of course, is entirely up to you. What I'd say is that the most important thing is what's inside the glass. That's where all the real flavor is. And certainly, when you're drinking something from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society that's been bottled at cask strength, that gives much more flavor impact much more body in the dram and more aromas coming out of the glass. I hope that helps. If you want to know more about the importance of the whiskey maturation process in creating an endless variety of expressions, watch this video. Cheers.